Hey guys, welcome to NZ Money Karma. It's so wonderful to have you guys along. Thank you so much if you're a subscriber and thank you for watching. If you're here for the first time, um, I normally do quite a lot of cash stuffing. It's one of the main things I do on this channel. In fact, it's been 99.9% .9 of what I've done on this channel. But today I want to talk about something a wee bit different. Something that has been on my mind for a while. Just looking at the geopolitical instability that we kind of live amongst, having come out of the COVID pandemic, and seeing households struggle every week to kind of put food on the table and pay the bills. Um, I think a lot of people are in survival mode at the moment, and I kind of would like to see more people in thrive mode. I talk about three things that I think are absolutely essential so that you can thrive economically in 2024 and in the future survive. I mean, who knows where this crazy world is headed. Um, I think the more of a buffer we have, the better we're going to be. So let's jump in and see the three things that I'm doing and that I think are essential for 2024. So number one is voluntary simplicity. What that means is that you're making a lifestyle choice that minimizes the needless consumption of material goods. So you're not consuming things just for the sake of consuming them. And this is throughout, I guess, the household economy. So it's not just staying away from Kmart and the $2 shop, you know, buying things you really don't need. Um, it, it comes down to everything. It's eating. You know, when you're eating, are you full already and you're carrying on eating? You know, you're consuming things that you don't really need. Um, and I think that's partly being frugal. Um, you know, I can't admit, I just have a, a frugal kind of bent to the way I do life. It's that downshifting into a simpler way of life voluntarily. So I think we'll get there eventually, and I think it will be a forced downshift into simplicity, simply because the Earth's resources cannot keep providing the world with um, innumerable glue sticks, sellotapes and stickers, you know, things that we just can live without really. It's not just minimizing those kind of things, it's looking at everything within your household and thinking, is there a way I can minimize my consumption of that? But I think for 2024, it's a need. This is how you can not only save your household money, every time you don't consume something, A, you don't have to buy it, so you don't have to spend the money, but every time you minimize needless consumption, you know, say it's, I don't know, something random, like you've done some baking and you've baked 20 biscuits and you sit down for afternoon tea. Maybe two biscuits was enough, but instead you eat five. So you've had that kind of needless consumption Otherwise, that afternoon tea would actually last two days. Conserve your resources, people. That is something you can do in 2024 that's going to help you thrive and in the future will help you survive. What are resources? Well, resources are our income, um, our power, our water, our gas, the food we have in our cupboards. Conserve them. Use them wisely. Don't not use them. I'm not saying you must have a cold shower. But do you have to have a 20 minute shower? Or can you actually get clean in two minutes? Let's treat everything that like it's precious. So our water's precious, our electricity is precious, because every time we use it, when we consume something, we're actually taking away from something else. So every time we consume water, we're actually taking that away from the planet, aren't we? Whenever we consume electricity, we're taking that not just off the grid, but we're taking that from a source. And what's the impact of that from the source? So if it's a hydro dam or it's wind power um, or it's dirty power, there's a cost to consuming that. So the more we can be careful with our resources and conserve our resources, the better off we are gonna be and also better off the planet's gonna be. Number two, cutting costs. So this is kind of old school. I bet every one of you is thinking, crikey, how can I cut some costs for 2024? And I am going to follow this up with a video in the next wee while about things we do in our house that save us 
tens of thousands of dollars every year. Tens of thousands of dollars. That's how we can live so cheaply because it's not that we have a miserable life and we don't do anything. It's that we do things differently so we can still have fun, but it doesn't cost us, you know, gazillions of dollars to do it. So number two, cutting costs. If you haven't done it, I would encourage you to go through your electric bill, your gas bill, your water bill and your rates and see what discounts are available. Um, this is one of the times when having less money, the more it ends up costing you because there's often discounts for things like paying a year in advance, you know, paying it all or always making sure you're paying on time, definitely, because you don't want to incur a cost. Um, are there discounts if you pay it all in one go? So, for example, with your insurance, if you pay it all up front, is it cheaper? A recent example we had was last year with our children getting braces um, if we paid up front, we got a 10% discount. So if we were paying up front, there's 10% off the cost of those braces. If you didn't have that $8,500 sitting there able to pay and you chose to go ahead with the purchase, well, you paid $850 more for your braces than I did for my children's. So that cost you money. And it's, it's, you know, it saved me money. So definitely look at ways that you can cut your costs, not only by consuming less, but also by just going through your bills and seeing if there's a way you can do it differently. Phone's another perfect example. Um, we have one phone for our entire family. We're all 1980s style here. And our phone costs us $120 for the year. I buy that as a one-off um, a one -off deal, I guess. And that does us for the entire year. It's unlimited calls throughout New Zealand and Australia, unlimited texts, and it does have some data, but we use a dumb phone that you can't use internet on anyway, so that doesn't matter for us. Where else can you cut costs? Can you grow your own food? I bet you can. I bet you can grow something. You know, think about now summer, okay, what can you quick, what could you buy a packet of seeds of and never have to buy for the rest of the year? Lettuce is the first thing that comes to mind. Lettuce is super easy to grow. You don't have to start off from seeds. Just take a packet, you know, sprinkle a quarter of it someplace in the garden and keep it watered and you will have lettuce. You will never be a pack and save looking at lettuces going, oh my goodness, that's $4 for a lettuce. Ah, it's something small, but you can do it, and little things make a difference. So cut costs any way you can. Like I said, I'm going to do the video that talks all about the frugal things that we do that help save us money, so I'm not going to go into all of it here. Number three is saving any spare money you have. Now, if you've done number one, you've made lifestyle choices that are minimizing the needless consumption of goods and you've cut your costs, it stands to reason that you're going to have extra money left over. So you have grown the gap between what you make and what you spend and that this is the buffer that you can now start saving. So every dollar you put away to save provides a little bit of insurance, a little bit of insulation against the tough times. Um, if you thought 2023 was hard, you thought our bills went up like in ridiculous amounts, well, I can only predict that 2024 is going to be more of the same. You know, still, when I've rung up and questioned why my bill has gone up, people are still saying things like war in Ukraine and COVID. Um, I wouldn't have thought those are affecting us hugely in New Zealand per se, still, but they are. This is the reason companies are giving for crazy price increases, like 30% plus. So some of those things are not going away. And if they do go away, then they're going to be replaced by something else. So that geopolitical instability affects you no matter where in the world you are, even if you're just kind of one stop from Antarctica. So using that money that you've, you've saved, so you've grown the gap, and now you've got extra money to put aside challenge yourself to actually save it. That's what I'd say, challenge yourself to save it. I think saving wads of money, it not, it's not just for the sake of it, people. 
we're not just saving because we want to be Scrooge McDuck and go kind of swimming in our cash. You're saving money for your family's future stability. And for me, that's a really huge motivator. I absolutely love the idea of changing my family tree so that when it's time for my kids to go to university, um, there's money there to help them. When they get into a home, I would really like it that they don't have to take a mortgage. That's what we're, and that's the kind of stuff we work towards because that changes your family tree. You know, we paid off our mortgage early, but it still took, you know, we still had a mortgage for years and we still paid tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds, um, to the banks for the pleasure of having that mortgage. So if we can change that for our family, then that wealth stays with them. And then that kind of, I don't know, that changes the way we do things. It changes the way their life and their children's lives are going to be. And that's what I really want. But one of the things I see when people are doing cash stuffing is that they're taking their paycheck, I don't know, whatever that may be. Say it's $1,000, that's what our budget is. Now, if you've jumped over to Substack, you'll see what our early retirement plan is. So you'll know we don't just make $1,000 and then spend it all on our bills and cash stuffing. We use $1,000 as our budget, and then everything we make above $1,000 is saved and invested. So if you're taking your $1,000 paycheck and you're doing a zero-based budget and allocating every dollar and making sure it's working for you, that's a good step. But one of those line items needs to be savings. So you can't take your $1,000 and allocate it into food, hobbies, holidays, kids' school uniform, whatever, and spend the $1,000. There has to be a line item that says saving, kids' uniform, food, da-da-da-da-da. And I always say pay yourself first. So whatever your savings amount is, um, if you're debt-free, it should be at least 15% going into your retirement, as per Dave Ramsey. I'm a bit of a follower of his, so I think that at the very minimum is what you need to be doing. If you're not debt-free, then a $1,000 emergency fund, these aren't my ideas, I'm just parroting what Dave Ramsey says, a $1,000 emergency fund, and then pay off that debt with that those savings. That's got to be a priority. You can't move forward in life when you have a debt, so whether that be a student loan or, I don't know, a credit card or something like that, anything that's a debt outside of the mortgage, you've got to kill it. It's got to be a priority, so make that a priority for 2024, please, because that's how you're going to start winning with money and get these bigger choices in 2025. But this is a long game, so none of these things are get-rich-quick plans. Everything takes time. When we were paying off our mortgage, that took seven years. Seven years of extremely focused work, extremely frugal living, but it's paid dividends. Not only is the money we make now ours to keep, but we've been able to live a life that would seem unusual to many. You know, we've lived a life where one parent has just worked part-time for the last seven years. We've lived a life where we spend more than three months a year outside of New Zealand traveling. We've been able to homeschool our kids. There's always been a parent at home, this kind of thing. So it pays dividends to put your head down, bum up, and just do the work you need to do to get where you need to go. So that's it for me. Those are the three things I think need to happen in 2024 so that you can financially thrive. So number one, voluntary simplicity. Number two, cut your costs. And number three, save the money. Okay, please let me know in the comments below if those make sense, if you have anything else you'd recommend doing, or if you disagree completely. I'd love to hear what you think. Okay, I'll see you soon for some cash stuffing later on in the week. Bye for now.